With the recent hits such as Red Dead Redemption and L.A. Noir, Rockstar has once again gone after the next title within their largest franchise, Grand Theft Auto V. With already over $1 billion in sales, with high ratings across the board, does the title really live up to all the positive press it's received? Well, as always, let's delve into it and find out. Michael, man, your blood sugars are low. I'm making you some leftovers. I'm fine, T. Huh? No, I'm the host, man. You know, I don't want you to get hungry and moody, right? Then you're going to be making the wrong decisions. Since Grand Theft Auto 3, the story within the number GTA series has taken much more of a realistic and dark approach, receiving mixed results in the end. Grand Theft Auto 4, the most recent in the series, had a large disconnect between the player and the character, Nico. Luckily, Rockstar has learned from their recent titles like Red Dead Redemption to bring together a tale that touches on the matters of crime, psychopaths, sociopathic behavior, torture, government corruptions, and more without even batting an eye. Some would say that it fails to teach a lesson, but truly that is the marvel of this bold game. It doesn't try and teach you anything. It doesn't have you steal millions of dollars and then try and teach you the rights and wrong of doing that. It just lets you do that and leave the morals to yourself. These were the opportunities I had. At least I took them. The story follows the three characters, Michael, Trevor, and Franklin, all criminals in their own right. Michael is a hot-headed ex-criminal that succeeded by doing what needed to be done, but fails to live a life of enjoyment. His wife is unfaithful, and his kids hate having him around. Franklin, on the other hand, is quite the opposite. You find him working his way out of a gang with plenty of roadblocks along the way, with each new success being followed by more and more problems. And then there's Trevor. A maniacal drug addict meth head with conspiracy theories about the government that he thinks is always out to get him. Together these three form a team that oddly works. It's their strong need for either money or the thrill of the heist that allows them to put aside their differences and play out the mission at hand. It may not be the perfect team, but it's in fact very interesting to see how they work together and manage to pull off each heist. Grand Theft Auto V manages to nail the overall feel of the immersive world and storytelling that is crime fiction. And it's something that will surely bring up controversy for the years to come. When you first step into the open world of Los Santos, it's easy to be amazed about the scope of the world that's around you. Rockstar has basically pulled a Skyrim and has given you something where, if you can see it, you can go to it. Everything you see seems to have been treated with painstaking detail from the art team, whether it's just graffiti on the walls or beauty of the mountains in the distance. But even though all this sounds nice, it does come at a price. The current gen consoles just can't seem to handle the game very well, leading to texture pop-ins everywhere you go and a terrible frame rate that usually sits below 30 frames per second, which is largely unacceptable for any video game today. There's also been reports of the game for people that bought it digitally or installed both the Xbox 360 discs that they're only getting around 10 frames per second, which is terrible. If this was a vision that Rockstar wanted to create, it certainly doesn't feel like it when playing on the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox 360. The game only runs in 720p, it's in dire need of anti-aliasing and a higher resolution to fully be embraced as a beautiful technical marvel. But don't get me wrong, it's by far one of the best looking games on the consoles to date despite its major setbacks due to the hardware. It's recommended that you be patient though and wait for the PC version to release and avoid all those issues together. I'm killing me some bad guys. Time to face the music! Sweet mother of shit. Grand Theft Auto 4, of all things, was widely known for its poor driving mechanics, bad gunplay, and overall just sloppy feel of controlling your character within the world. In Grand Theft Auto V, however, you'll be happy to know that pretty much every aspect has been improved and worked on. The driving no longer feels like you're on ice half the time, and each of the 190 cars feel in way differently changing how they turn and react to how you drive them. However, helicopters and planes handle terribly, and is probably some of the worst wobble I've ever seen. Not even in the Arma series, which is a military simulator, have I seen helicopters wobble like this. It's just kind of ridiculous to see, and play. 
The gunplay has been improved in the form of how Red Dead Redemption did its shooting, minus the slow motion, but there are abilities that work in a similar fashion that we'll get to in a moment. However, since the frame rate within the game is so bad, they had to make it so the lock-on was kind of like an aimbot so you can properly aim your gun. Even though you can turn it off, I wish you good luck shooting with twin sticks at that frame rate, especially if you're used to 60 frames per second and a keyboard and mouse. But it does at least manage to streamline the experience a bit to alleviate some of the frustrations you would have otherwise. As previously mentioned, you follow the story of Michael, Franklin, and Trevor, but you may also play as these three characters at any given time almost. Each character has a set amount of skills in an RPG-like fashion that can be upgraded by simply doing activities that would improve them. Want to improve your driving skill? Drive more. Want to improve your weapon skill? Go to a shooting range. The same works for all of your skills. Each character has a special ability that they can activate to improve a certain situation into their favor. Michael can slow down time to make quick maneuvers with a gun. Franklin can slow down time with a vehicle that will also increase his turning ability to allow for some wonderful maneuvers and getaways. Then Trevor has his rage ability that pretty much lets him go bananas aimbotting his way to victory while one-shotting everyone, which turns out to be quite satisfying. One great addition to the game is the heists. Although much simpler and entirely linear compared to a game like Payday 2, they offer a much more story-oriented and planned out methodical way of creating the perfect heist. You'll be given the choice to go loud and dumb or quiet and smart. You'll go around collecting the vehicles and items required for the heist as well as pick the crew you want to go with you, which could lead to some interesting scenarios depending on if they are pro or not. But the biggest issue with the heist is the fact that no matter what you do, you yourself cannot change the outcome of the heist. You will never be able to, on your own, escape a heist without something scripted happening. For instance, the first heist was the jewelry store and I hired a hacker that gave me 90 seconds to rob the place while the cameras were offline. I got out in 50 seconds and because the game says so, the alarm goes off anyway for no reason other than it wants me to do a police chase because action, you must have it. But even still, the game has a bunch of things to offer like really good 9 hole golf, tennis, triathlons, in addition to some random quests like strangers and freaks to offer a bunch of hours of gameplay. After completing just about everything in the game, it took me roughly 40 hours which is phenomenal. The game also warrants a second playthrough to try and get the most cash out of all the heists and the really cool in-game stock market that you get to mess around with and bend into your favor. Then with GTA Online just around the corner, you'll be introduced to 700 missions, 500 of them being available to you and your friends from the very beginning featuring new heists and missions for you to do. The amount of content here is truly amazing and the gameplay holds up for some very enjoyable times. Didn't you tell me that if I turned things over, you know, start it again, that the universe would find some way to forgive me? Wasn't that you? And have you turned things over? Well, no, I mean, you know, not really, but that's not the point. In all, Grand Theft Auto V features one of the best stories in crime fiction I've ever seen, mixed in with fairly solid gameplay mechanics that work well for the consoles. The game is heavily held back by the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 hardware, so if you have the patience, I'd say wait for the PC version to come out. And with the addition of GTA Online coming October 1st, the game has the potential to be one of the biggest blockbuster hits of all time. And that's why Grand Theft Auto V gets a 5 out of 5. Jesus. Mikey, you want a beer? Oh, shit, I'm sorry I don't have any low car. Oh, fuck you. Uh, where'd you two go when you went out, you and your boyfriend? Why do you care? I don't care. Just trying to conversate. Well, I was out putting some people in their place. Ah, you know, there's more to this gig than just going crazy all the time, killing everyone in sight. Just because I like the life and you feel guilty about it doesn't make you more of a man than me. So there you have it, my Grand Theft Auto 5 review. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Of course, feel free to leave any comments below as to what you liked and didn't like about the game. For more reviews, you can check out my channel by clicking the bottom left logo on the screen right now to watch Let's Plays, reviews, gaming commentary, and more. Hope to see you there. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Akabane101, and I'll see you next time.